So here in this sample company called Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, I'll go ahead and show you how we can use the vendor's contact list to keep an accurate record of the vendors that you have W9s for or vendors that you might need to send a request for W9s. If we go back to the dashboard here, under reports, we're gonna click on reports. There's multiple ways of finding this report. You can either scroll down to expenses and vendors and click on vendor contact list. It's also preferable if you're gonna be using this report, you can put a little star next to it so that it is at the top under your favorites or you can use the search button here and start typing in vendors. And here you'll see a list of any reports that include the word vendor. We're gonna use vendor contact list. And from here, this is a customized or generalized report that QuickBooks Online has for the vendors list. The way I'm gonna go ahead and show you on how it could be beneficial to keep an accurate record of the vendors you have W9s for or you might not have W9s entered for is we're gonna customize this report. So we're gonna go under customize. And here you can choose the columns that you would like to view that will be beneficial for this type of report. So for us, we need the vendor's name. Uh, we should keep a uh, phone number since if we have to request vendors, we're gonna give them a call it's your choice if you'd like to keep emails. I personally send out a lot of emails, so I would choose the email. Uh, I don't think we need full name, address, maybe contact number if that is the details that you would like to see. We're definitely gonna click on track 1099, and then we're just gonna go down the list of what we would like to see on this report. We're definitely gonna need tax ID. And then from there, I don't think we need any of these other columns here. So for the majority, this is what we would need to track if we have sent out W9s or we have W9s for this vendor. So we're gonna have vendor's name, phone numbers, emails, account number, track 1099 and tax ID. And when we have chosen our columns, we're gonna go ahead and run report. And down here, if you see on this report here, we have the vendor's name, phone number for that vendor, email, account number. Then we have tr track 1099 and tax ID. Now over here, we don't just go by the no or yes on this column because if for maybe there's a situation where you have received a W-9, but you just haven't inputted the information. So don't go based completely by this column here. If we review this report that we're going to go down the vendors list and just by looking at it, we're going to try to indicate if these are vendors that we do need a tax ID in the system or if we don't. So we have this uh, insurance agency. We have a W-9 because we have their tax ID, but then we know that um, a telephone company won't need, we won't need a W-9 from them. But if we go down right here, it says Pam. Well, this one, we're not 100% sure if we need a tax ID or not because it is an individual name. So that would be the first trigger to indicate that maybe we do need a W-9. And we're gonna click into the client's information card and we're gonna go to edit. And say we do find out based on the research that we do that we do need a W-9 from this client and we don't have one. Uh, eventually we request it from the client and they send us the information. Okay, we're gonna send, we're gonna input the information for the tax ID here and we're gonna click right here where it says track payments for 1099. We're gonna click save and we have updated that vendor's information. And now when we go back into the list itself, it says right here, well, it says yes, we're tracking this client. And also we do have the tax ID for this vendor. Now that's how I apply this list and how I use this vendor's list to keep me updated on the W-9 so that by the end of the year, when we are trying to meet a deadline, we have all that information instead of trying to get all that information 
all at the all at once, which will create a much bigger workload because you're going to have to hunt these uh, vendors down. Uh, some respond back, some don't, some take their time uh, responding back with that W9. We don't want to be dealing with that. Some tips and an overview of what I just went over with you on how to use the vendor contact list to keep your W-9s up to date. So here, it's always good practice to request a W-9 before sending a vendor payment. That way you have that W-9 in there. Of course, after you send the payment, sometimes in some cases, not always, it's harder to obtain that W-9. Also, I suggest to review this uh, vendor contact list uh, either monthly or quarterly depending on how many vendors are on that list also do some research if the tax id is missing off the contact list then it doesn't necessarily mean that it, they do need a w-9 but you need to go back and do some research if we need a w-9 from this vendor and if we do then this is the best time to send out that w-9 request so that we are not dealing with all of this all at once at the end of the year and if you want to use this report again and not have to customize it every single time you can click over here where it says save customization and then you're gonna name it you can enter vendor w9 checklist and then you're gonna click down here where it says save and then if we go back to our reports and under custom reports, you're going to see it right here, vendors W9 checklist. By applying these steps to your workflow, the end of the year process is going to be much more manageable because you won't be hunting down these vendors for these W9, which would be one less step that you will have to complete in order to submit your 1099s by the January deadline. Let me know below if this video was helpful, like and subscribe, and also comment below and let me know if this is the type of content that you are looking for and the type of content that you find helpful. It really helps me out. So I hope to see you at my next video.